You women are Sarah's children, are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. What's up, y'all? Today we're going to be watching some John Piper and reacting to it. He's going to be talking about godly women, the characteristics of a godly woman. He's a wonderful preacher, whether or not you're reformed in your theology. He's very biblical in his approach. Let's get right to it. A Christian woman does not put her hope in her husband or in getting one. A Christian woman does not put her hope in her looks. You remember my favorite verse in the Proverbs 31 woman chapter? Verse 25, strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. Yeah, so right away, he kind of hints at modesty. He doesn't use the word there, but he talks about how virtue should be adorned instead of a specific type of clothing. And I think if we're going to talk about modesty today, we actually have to redefine modesty for women and not even redefine it in its application, but redefine it in terms of why we're being modest. Because if you're going to look at this piece of clothing versus that piece of clothing, it becomes very legalistic and it also becomes a little unfair uh, for some women, if they're built in a particular way, it can be kind of hard. This is how I want you to look at modesty, both men and women. It's going to be more on the women's side because you'll see why when I explain it. The way you should look at modesty is you shouldn't be bragging with your body, literally. Like if I was a wealthy man, which I assure you I'm not, it would be unbecoming of me as a Christian to be dangling around my Porsche keys uh, in front of everybody and holding a wad of money up to my ear all the time. That wouldn't be very Christian of me because it's braggadocious. Now, same if you're a woman, you shouldn't be bragging about your body. You know, it's a beautiful gift that even other women can really appreciate the beauty of a woman's body. You shouldn't brag about it. You should instead be adorned with virtue, as John Piper is hinting at here, but he doesn't really go into it in detail. But I think it's an important thing to talk about in terms of modesty. It's unbecoming of a woman of God to be showing off her gifts from God in a way that is blatant like that. It's not just, am I being inappropriate or not? It's, am I being braggadocious with my body? That's a worldly thing. That's what worldly women do. And I know a lot of godly women who have the wrong definition or angle towards modesty, so they think it's about what's appropriate and what's not, and it becomes very legalistic, and it's kind of tricky for them. But if they were to look at it and say, how do I not brag with my body? You see, it kind of switches it, and it kind of draws out the virtue from you, and it invites you to be a really mature Christian woman. I love that verse. Everything that's coming at me, I'm laughing at you. That's a woman. She doesn't cringe. She doesn't run. She's not naive about what's coming. She knows what's coming. And she laughs because holy women of old hoped in a sovereign God who promises to help women whenever she needs him. Isn't that wonderful? Not being fearful is not dependent on you being naive. When God says, do not fear to men and women alike, he doesn't say this because he wants you to be naive. Actually, he's told you in scripture, it talks of how hard your life is going to be, trials and tribulations. We don't have to be naive about what's to come, but we should laugh at those days anyway. And actually, most translations are going to say rejoice in the days to come. Look at those days to come and rejoice. Rejoice anyway, because you know that God's gone before you and he'll be with you whilst you're there. Isn't that a beautiful thing that we can hope in? because of our sovereign God, because of our good, good God who cares for us and who takes care of us. You don't have to be a future denier, nor do you have to be a future manipulator to rejoice in the days to come and to laugh at them. That's what stamps most deeply. A woman in Christ knows her Bible, knows her theology of a sovereign God who makes promises, knows his promises to be with her no matter what. She draws strength down from this, and certain kind of tree grows up from this massive, deep root of hope in God. That's number one. Number two, this hope in God yields fearlessness. Verse six, second half of the verse. And you women are Sarah's children, are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. 
which comes from hope in God. There's plenty that's frightening in the world. Frightening in relationships, frightening in children, frightening in health, frightening in the future. And Peter says, you will be Sarah's daughters if you're not afraid of anything. Because you're a holy woman who hopes in God. See, again, he reiterates, it's not that this world isn't frightening. So if you're watching this video saying, Matt, but it's frightening, it's scary. God doesn't tell you not to be afraid because there aren't frightening things coming. He tells you not to be afraid because he will be there. We serve such a good God that he doesn't take every frightening circumstance out of our life. Instead, he is just with us and he guarantees the victory in each and every one of these circumstances. And he's sovereign over all these frightening things and you know that and you rest in him and that drives out your fear. Mature Christian women are not naive about what's coming at them. They've read the rest of the book. Chapter 3, verse 14, even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. She knows suffering's coming. Chapter 4, verse 19, therefore, let those, we could just simply say, those women, let those who suffer according to God's will and trust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. The deepest root of a Christian woman is hope in God, and it yields this strong tree of fearlessness in the face of suffering. Yeah, it's nice to trust your husband, and you should trust your husband because to love is to trust. But trusting in God has to be the root. It has to be. I mean, yeah, you, you want a husband that doesn't make you worry about things and that does take care of things. But ultimately, ultimately, yeah, trust in the Lord. Don't trust in your husband because he's he won't always be there. He will die one day. And he's going to make mistakes along the way. Trust in the Lord. Like the root of every good, steadfast woman who walks in virtue and not in sin is going to be a trust in God. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Speak to you soon.